the only thing that i have right. loved in my life is drugs but i have loved it so much i have to give it up i cannot get high i acknowledged it i still acknowledge this every day every moment of my life that i have a disease i cannot get high but it's not a very bad thing to do i won't get high today if the right. world crashes down upon me i am not going to get high i'm not going to have that first drink or the first ice or the first drug today i might have it tomorrow mm. but not today maybe it's not a very physical physically challenging job to do but emotionally it's very challenging for an actor to pull out an intense scene after a very physical rigorous workout mm-hmm. so i started balancing it life is all about balancing today if i have a i know what my scenes are i try and do easy rides or maybe not right take a chill pill have coffee then go for my shoot that's how i plan my day I am Bai Ki Winky and this is the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, time management and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes. Today's guest Anindya Chatterjee is a film and TV actor. In his younger days, he has been a state level swimmer who represented bengal before heroin addiction took over his life and drove him to the ground after years of struggle he managed to undergo rehab and stay addiction free since 2008 in this episode we talk about his struggles with addiction and how he managed to overcome them we talk about how cycling helped him stay fit during the pandemic and continues to do so We talk about how he manages to ride during the erratic work schedules and what his future goals and aspirations are with regards to cycling. Let us get into my conversation with Anindya. Welcome to the Working Athlete podcast uh, Anindya. It's a pleasure having you on the show. It's a pleasure for me as well to be on the podcast with you. Great. Anindya, let us start by talking uh, a bit about what is work for you so primarily i'm an actor uh, so i have a very erratic work schedule sometimes the mondays become a sunday and sometimes a day is usually 22 days a month i work for 12 to 14 hours that to outside so it's a lot of calorie burn that happens outside so you know, when i track my calories it's a, and 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 especially where since i'm an actor uh, due to my erratic work schedule i hardly get to time to work out or so morning is the time when i do something for myself acting and uh, mostly outdoors yes and mostly outdoor or around. inside the studio okay so let us start talk about uh, you know how was your early uh you know childhood and any introduction to sports or anything in your background so uh in to, to 1993 i was introduced to my first love that's water so yeah from 1993 to 2001 i was into professional swimming so i represented district calcutta district then west bengal so i wanted to become a professionally swim so during my growing up years i i used to train for at least 8 7 8 hours a day so 3 3 and 3 hours 3 and a half hours in the morning then 3 and a half hours 4 hours in the evening so, so yeah 8 hours of training i used to do and since uh, back in the days there was no heated pool in calcutta we only used to get trained in summers so there is a season right from april right till september october so there was no concept of heated pool in calcutta so we used to train every season so yeah i've been into fitness uh, i was glad as water is still my first love every time i see a swimming pool it's like <laughs> it's just i feel like jump right in so yeah i used to be right. a sprinter how 
my uh, okay. my event was 50 meter freestyle 100 meter freestyle 100 meter breaststroke and uh, 200 meter butterfly so that's my event so uh, yeah till 2001 uh, i did swimming uh, then i uh, got into the water polo team i played water polo for two years and after that yeah i eventually i had to leave uh, so, uh, the love of swimming so i got into work and yeah. stuff happened yeah okay. that was my childhood so uh, so how old were you when you started swimming you said 1993 or something. yeah yeah i was i was probably 10 year 11 year old uh, maybe right. eight or nine something yeah uh-huh. so i, I was That's pretty when you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I used to uh, bunk schools the, for swimming. I, I I used to I used to like tell my parents, yeah, let me not go to the school. I want to swim. So yeah, <laughs> that's how it started. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know, being introduced to sport at an young age uh, means that you are uh, used to the. Uh, discipline the rigor of yes. waking up yes. showing up yes. and yes. Uh, you know uh, training so what were the days like uh, in uh, during that time uh, during your swimming days how do you schedule how was uh, your typical day uh, looking so my like? typical day, uh, typical day used to start at 6 I used to get ready, go for my swimming classes from 7 to 9.30. By 10 o'clock, I used to come back home. But the Because the swimming pool uh, that I used to go to, that was near to my place. So it's a 10 minutes, 5 minutes walking distance. So I used to come come home, get ready, go for my school. Then come back, uh, the like 3.30, I used to, my school used to get over. And I would straight go to the swimming pool, do my training, then come back home. Okay. So back then, back then there was no fitness tracking watches. Uh, there was, there was nothing. Uh, there was nothing. Uh, we used to yeah. train by our physical instincts. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So um, how how was the experience of uh, being in competition uh, like district level? It was. And yeah, yeah. The... It was brilliant. I, I, since the comp, uh, so the. Being an athlete, being a swimmer, uh, the competitive streak was always being there. It was always mm-hmm. being there. Sometimes I used to get podium. Sometimes I, I never. It, 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 that's a part of uh, the game. Sometimes I used to win. Sometimes I used to lose. But being in there, being, uh, being in that competitive spirit, helped me shaping up as a human being. I'm still very competitive when it comes to different aspects of life. How, how far did you go in terms of uh, swimming? Uh, what uh, is the so, highest uh, level you I, I, did, I, 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 I did school games, national. Um, uh, oh. And I did, uh, I represented district uh, for seven, eight years. I represented Bengal for three years. Yeah. Okay. Great, great. So, what were some of the uh, striking memories from those days, from your uh, swimming days? So, nowadays, when I see uh, swimmers, they swim at a very fast pace. Very, like 50, 50 meters. Right now, the national timing would be somewhere around 25, 24, if I'm not wrong. Back in the days, of doing a 26 seconds or sub 26 was a big thing everything yeah. is so fast so yeah when i i still remember the day i swam under 28 seconds 50 mm. meter freestyle on a sprint so yeah i, I still yeah. remember that day like pushing myself yeah. to the i didn't know how heart rate works now i know how mm-hmm. I, what zone i'm into but there was zone 5 zone 6 zone 7 like going all out in that sprint i still remember that day Right. So the, then you mentioned water polo and uh, oh, yes. doing uh, water polo for a couple of uh, years. What was that like? So 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 swimming has a very short shelf shelf life. By the uh, by the time you hit twenty three, you're into group one. You're old for swimming. 
mm. you know right. so you see this national level athletes they're like their peak is at 17 18. so mm. yeah by the time i uh, so eventually you have to shift to water polo if you want to be a swimmer or so yeah water polo what happened i was uh, i was training for i was i used to train for a local club i used to play for that club and one game uh, there was some brutality so I, I used to play center forward so the backy hit me right here so two of my molars just came out i still don't have wow. two molars out here after that i slowly uh, drifted away from the sport and that's how water polo i played for two years yeah and then there there was uh, you know a break in between and uh, yes there, there you... is a break i was so, i was uh, busy shaping up my career and everything hmm. and and hmm. and uh and being an actor uh, i always had to be in, in shape and uh, uh surprisingly i hated gym hmm. i okay. i i still I, i still hate going to a gym and working out it doesn't come from within you know right so yeah somehow i i forced myself to be in shape by going to the gym and do all that but during lockdown what a miracle happened i was introduced to cycling so the mm. kid in me who used to be a swimmer found a new love and cycling so it started like right. that yeah nice nice uh, before we get there Uh, let us take a little a bit of a step back and i was i'm curious as to uh, you know how you became an actor what what was that driving force that uh, you know got you interested in acting very interesting question so never in my wildest dream that i thought i would become an actor i would be a celebrity in calcutta i would walk into the streets people would come and come to me for selfies autographs and never in my wildest dream i thought about it so uh, i have always been a creative person so i wanted to so the film making process always excited me so i wanted to be in the field as behind the camera i started out i still do a lot of production work for different tv series films and stuff and i write and i write scripts i do a lot of all that kind of stuff but never thought that i would become an actor that happened totally coincidentally i was just casted for my tattoos and i did the first film then the offer started pouring in and i kind of it took me two years to fell in love with the actor that's inside me and then i started uh, reading about it studying it practicing it and in last 10 years i, I think i'm somehow managed to be a decent actor i still have okay. a, a lot of room for improvements but yeah, yeah i still can we all do that's all we yeah all I, I, yeah so <laughs> acting happened coincidentally and 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 it's just by the grace of god uh, in last 10 years i did a couple of, like around 20 films a lot of web series a lot of tv serials currently i'm busy doing a tv serial that takes up 22 22 23 days of month with 12 hours of 14 hours of slogging hmm. my ass yeah right so uh, you mentioned uh, that you uh, you were cast for your tattoos did i hear that right yes yeah 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 of uh, course uh, uh, back then i had no acting experience i was a uh, i just fitted the character with tattoos so the director okay. casted me you know when am i uh, why am i casting you because you have great tattoos back then tattoos was not that into a culture mm. so I, i had a handful of tattoos so, so that's how i played i got my first break then i started exploring my uh the actors that that's inside i started exploring i i did a lot of workshops and theater watching a lot of films helped me now mm. 
that's how i grew as an actor what were you doing uh, when you uh, were cast into acting what what, what exactly were you doing i was, I was uh, yeah I, I i i was working as a casting director in calcutta okay. i was assisting a lot of directors i i i was an assistant director i was a production manager i did a lot of production so the entire filmmaking process always excited me um hmm. It still does. It still does. At yes. some point, I would end up making a film or a documentary. So, but, yeah. so by from That's behind the happened. camera, from behind the scenes, yeah, from behind the, the camera. camera, you came into the front of the camera. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. yeah. Or, That's how it started. One of the things that kind of uh, intrigued me was something that you talk uh, quite a bit uh, on social media is uh, about. the fight you had with addiction and how you overcame it and how you um, you know are able to continuously stay sober and you know uh, yes. do good work it's a very so, interesting can, story yeah so Let can can you talk insight, a little so. bit in that yeah, yeah 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 so so the the reason i drifted away from swimming is because i was in a deep addiction so mm-hmm. substance abuse so i used to be a heroin junkie it started from 2002 3 i was i was fairly into school i was preparing for my class 10 that's how that's when i was introduced to drugs so so yeah my life fell apart when i was introduced to drugs i was i'm still a college dropout i couldn't finish my graduation due to my addiction so 7 years of uh rotting inside the hell and then seeing life from a very different perspective has helped me as a uh human of course i see things from a very different perspective i have learned more on the streets than any classroom would have taught me the lessons of life that's how i've seen of being in jail mm. and live life on the streets i used to be a hardcore heroin junkie and i lived in bangalore mm. too during that time mm. yeah so in and out of rehabs uh, I, i it was a vicious cycle i never thought that i would come out of it but some somehow i had no choice to give it a try that let me just give it a give my fresh last shot to stay clean and since 2008 i've been clean uh, from addiction i don't I don't have to drink to celebrate my happiness. I don't have to drink or get high to embrace my sorrows. I can still uh, see things from a very clear eye, and yeah, life has been good since two thousand eight. So let us take you know dig a little deep, a uh, bit deeper into that period, uh, and talk about how how did you get into that. Uh, you know uh, the uh, how did you get introduced to drugs and how did you get into that addiction See, it's very easy it's, yeah it's very easy to blame it on friends stuff friends peer pressure but i always had that addictive self in me i wanted to uh, uh, deep inside i'm a rebel so that's how i grew up so who has certified addiction is a disease alcoholism addiction is a disease so i'm a disease person it took me some time mm. to accept it that mm. i have I, i'm flawed if i start doing drugs again i might not be able to stop i have a problem so i admitted i acknowledge the fact that i'm i have a disease of addiction i can't do things in moderation i can't get high in moderation to get like go all the way to get high so yeah it took me some time and and, and during my addiction days staying clean staying without getting high for a day was a task outside the rehab or a mm. detox i have done somewhere around 28 29 30 detox rehabs around calcutta in bangalore mm. everything failed but i was i was leaning against the wall i had no choice to give up i could see mm-hmm. death in front of my eyes all my uh, fellow using partners was dying of overdose some were com- committing suicide so i was uh, i was frustrated 
you mentioned you ended up in jail as well how what what was that about uh, what was that so like? so, 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 so. to support my drug money i had to do a lot of uh, things that i shouldn't be saying but yeah uh, stealing so to support my drug habit and my choice was beg borrow steal hmm. i used to whack right. mobile phones laptops um or what not so that yeah the, the kind of stuff i was hanging around with the wrong boys from the other side of the streets the wrong side of stuff yeah that landed me up in jail lockups numerous yeah. times right yeah. so, but fi- finally what what was one or what what were the things that told you that you need to get out of it you know you the finally of the fear of death right the fear of death you have seen yeah, I, 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 yeah I, i can see so i was physically shattered i had no mm. i used to be a id injecting drug ninja so i used to inject heroin so 21 18 19 times jabbing myself i had no veins left firstly and my body tolerance levels went so high up i was giving my body drugs but i was not getting high that was frustrating i was not getting high because the tolerance level of my body was so every day it was building up in such a way it needed more drugs to get high and it was a vicious cycle i was i was doing drugs to stay normal to talk to talk to my just to live a normal life i was doing drugs i was not getting high that was most frustrating i was depressed i was frustrated with life i never i had no hope i i had no intention of quitting her but that fear of death that if things go like this i won't be able to cross 28 27 right. yeah so i was literally shattered and and mm. that one thing the fear of death i could see because my i was i was in a, such a physical state of uh, i had no veins left i was giving my body drug i was not getting high physically i was in a really sad state mm. so yeah I, that's that also uh, you have seen others dying you have seen others uh, dying in front of you through overdose and disease and stuff then what, what you you mentioned you went through various cycles of uh, rehab and you know finally what helped you to uh, stay on track and you know continue to stay sober from 2008 so so so, so what really happens with us until unless you face that rock bottom until unless that last hurdle you cross you won't be able to stay clean i i crossed that back then i had to admit that i have a problem i cannot get high the only thing that i have loved in my life is drugs but i have loved it so much i have to give it up i cannot get high hmm. so i acknowledged it and i i I I still acknowledge this every day every moment of my life that I have a disease I cannot get high but it's not a very bad thing to do I won't get high today hmm. come what may if the hmm. world crashes down upon me I am not going to get high I'm not going to have that first drink or the first ice or the first uh drug today i might have it tomorrow hmm. but not today that so we don't have any control over our thoughts right hmm. it's fleeting hmm. i don't know what i'll be thinking after 30 minutes but these kind of thoughts keeps on fleeting and i i kind of man- master the art of managing myself and my thoughts hmm. i don't indulge in it too much you know the process of let us talk a little bit about uh, the process of rehab uh, just i i'm sure there are people 
uh, you know at various stages of uh, addic- substance substance abuse and addiction right be it uh, the nicotine be it uh, uh, you know alcohol be it uh, you know various other substances uh, like cocaine and let, uh, let me like just uh, let me just interrupt you here so there are two things uh, one is mm-hmm. mood altering substance and non mood altering substance so cigarettes uh, good cars uh, pan parag these are not non mood altering substance so if mm. you are sad if you smoke a cigarette you won't get more sadder but mm. alcohol and drugs these are all mood altering substance it aggravates your mood if you are sad if you have one drink you will be more sad if you want to aggravate more sadness into you you have another drink if you are happy mm. you have one drink you will be happier then you will be merry then at some point you will get drunk so these are there is a different between mood altering substance and non mood altering substance i wouldn't lie mm. to have one cigarette mm. or have one good car or or any kind of non mood drink i mm. i don't have to see mm. but for alcohol alcoholism and drug addiction you have to push yourself to that extra mile to get high okay so yeah okay. any kind of addiction it's it's hard to kick um, it's, it's 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 since uh, nicotine is being the hardest so mm. is alcohol so is heroin the most mm. addictive drug in the world is heroin so yeah uh, and and to be i'm being very realistic here Uh, if I talk about the census right now, the kind of drug users that right now India has or the world population has is going to get bigger. The only way to curb things are is awareness, and the future of drugs is better drugs. The kind of drugs that was there in the 80s, 90s changed the drug scene. The 2000 changed the drug scene. In 2030. or 2040 there will be new drugs so yeah it's a human evil evolution it's a part part of it what are the things that uh, someone who recognizes uh, that they have a problem they have an addiction Seek problem help. Seek, Seek help, help. That's, that's that's the you might not get lucky the first time but you have to seek help mm-hmm. there are 100 hands if if i if you see help i i had to raise my hand and ask for help what I are even ask for help what are those avenues of uh, seeking help that people can so there is a uh, yeah so so people who acknowledge that they have a problem of alcoholism or addiction worldwide we call it the 12 step program there is mm. alcoholic anonymous narcotics anonymous it's a worldwide fellowship who are staying clean and helping each other to stay clean mm. so uh, the disease has three parts it's like a mostly physical and spiritual and mental so we help each other to stay clean we share our thoughts we share help each other that's how we grow it's a it's a worldwide fellowship that we have and it's a non profit organization you don't need a single penny to become a member that's right. how that's how i have seen hmm alcoholic anonymous and narcotics anonymous narcotics anonymous yeah okay those are the uh, avenues that so you have can... the first thing yeah yeah be here seek help okay. just go yeah, if if someone has a addiction problem or someone in the family its addiction is so widespread you would see every neighborhood it has at least three or four people who are suffering from addiction we don't talk about it. Hmm. we don't hmm. talk about it. we try to hide things but it's 2022 it's a, if it's a problem we should talk about it because right. those who are suffering from addiction they are also a part of the society the mm. society can't grow without them right and okay. if we overlook those and if we over, overlook our problems in the society the problem will remain intact or it will grow we won't find we won't be able to find a solution to 
manage that problem. It's right. about finding a solution. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And spreading awareness. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Nowadays, you know th- that that is a very serious problem that you know that you one needs to first acknowledge and then seek help and you know and it is admitting something... admitting is easy admitting mm. i have a problem admitting is easy the moment you start acknowledging it you have to work it you have yeah. to work for it you have to work towards it and you have to put a physical mental effort to acknowledge them admitting is easy i can admit right. it, it takes a word of mouth but acknowledging it the moment you acknowledge it you have to work it out mm. you have to make make efforts towards make an, doing something exactly. about it right yeah. right yeah interesting uh, you know i uh, i don't know if uh, you know um, putting uh, the more prevalent addiction or uh, i if i can call call it that like uh, you know the addiction to mobile phones now uh, yes. is also something that is becoming very big i think right now but you know it it it's might a, not a, be it's a common phenomenon i i i don't have any problem when i see people getting high i don't have any problem with that as long as they are not missing out on their priorities getting high I, i don't have a problem the world shouldn't have a problem in getting high but the moment uh, in an individual starts missing out on their priorities to get high or any kind of addiction when it's a, addiction is a problem when you start missing out on your pri- priorities if you can manage your addiction fulfilling all your priorities like your family your responsibilities everything then addiction has no problem hmm it's a very good point that you make it's a very good point yeah. see yeah. i i think as i read somewhere that it it becomes a, a, you know addiction becomes a problem when and exactly when you uh it it starts to tinker with other areas of your life exactly right? exactly then it's a problem right. or else it's yeah. uh, it, it's not a problem it's not an addiction mm-hmm. right uh, right. suppose you are talking right. about mobile phone uh, if i am mm. too busy on my phone and i start missing out on my priorities i stop giving time to my family or the kind of responsibilities that i have if i start missing out on those then it's a problem i have to do something about it as mm. long as it's uh, not a problem it's not affecting my surrounding then it's mm. not a problem right so we all need to develop that awareness about exactly. you know how yeah. how things are getting affected because of our uh, whatever that we are doing right so then we will be on the right track i guess great great all right so thank you for uh, sharing those uh, insights about you know the kind pleasure. of uh, struggles you had with addiction and how you overcome that pleasure um, and that's how that that's how i started i did a couple of ted talks as well on addiction and i'm being vocal because i think being an actor uh, a lot of fans and followers i have and if i can inspire at least five of them or spread awareness amongst their families that will help me in the in some way because what i have gained i can only keep things to myself by giving it away right. right the kind of knowledge that i have i can only keep knowledge by giving it away correct correct share and uh, help others yeah and yeah. Uh, sharing you know, is caring yeah yes 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 great now let us talk uh, get into cycling and how you uh, ended up starting cycling what what got you into cycling lockdown lockdown uh, so mm-hmm. i live in my girlfriend first got a cycle that was a between a very entry level one so mm-hmm. i uh, so i used to go for walks in the evening because it there was a complete lockdown in calcutta mm-hmm. cycling was allowed slowly uh, i started cycling and and i i still remember the day i did 
first my first five kilometer in cycling but tracking it tracking cycling was a different task i was introduced to a smartwatch i used to wear a garmin before i could uh, before i knew how to use the real features of garmin that's mm-hmm. how it started so one fine day i was cycling and and, and i turned the cycling uh, gear and i i just i saw five kilometers so much of calories and my heart rate was up and i started exploring this bit and cycling that's how i used to do this three days because my girlfriend used to cycle the days she used to go out i used to sit back at home because i had no cycles <laughs> so we used to share one uh we used to share yeah. one then i got myself one and so i think happened when was this and, you know 2020 uh, this was, right no, uh, 2019 the first lockdown 19 okay the first lockdown hmm. when the covid uh thing started like so the whole that was tw- tw- 2020 march yes right 2020 march yeah. so i started in april i think I started in April, okay. March, April. Hmm. So that's how my cycling journey started. And, and, and uh, you know what happens? You know, my uh, we've seen Salman Khan cycling in Bombay roads, right? <laughs> right, right. So cycling started getting a lot of media attention when I started. Uh, thanks to my producer, Mr. Mahendra hmm. Soni. Uh, mm. he tagged me uh, in one of his insta stories yeah let's do 30 kilometers one day during lockdown mm. it's like 30 kilometers is too much how do i manage uh, that's how it started so we have a small group of tollywood actors and producers and some of mm. some of us uh, i have a fellow actor gorov chatterjee he's also also into cycling my producer is also into cycling the whole community like the tollywood they have a small group of 8 9 people who are into cycling so so the moment these people uh start cycling the media got uh, the cycling culture in calcutta got a lot of media attention when i did my first bike ride to the airport that got featured in newspapers and stuff so that's how yeah, what what i really like i enjoy cycling it's like a little vacation for me every every ride for a two three hours it's a vacation maybe on the same road but it's a vacation for me mm. i'm on my own yes. so yeah that's how it started and then and, and i look forward to this bike rides in the moment right so you that's you, how you started and mm. yeah and 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 i started since i had that athletic streak in me and uh So I first got a Trek Domani endurance geometry bike, and that's how mm. I started. So doing a 50 kilometers five five times a week really got me into it, and, and started gaining endurance was back. I used to put I could push more. Then I started training for it. Uh, so I am currently training under Mr. David Shah, mm. uh, who's a para national athlete. Uh, yes. So yeah, that's how I got into the structured training of it. Last two mm. months, I'm not being able to train, but yeah, mm. uh, I did my first race. Came second. I my goal is to do a 40 kilometer ITT under one hour. Right, right. That's, yeah, that's we spoke about it, right? So correct, yeah, correct. when you said it'll be, but yeah, we spoke about it. Yeah. That's my goal yeah. this year. I want to do a right. 40 k ITT under one hour. right so what are the uh, you got into cycling you started with uh, you know sharing a bike with your girlfriend then got yourself a, a road bike, bike. and uh, yeah. you know started riding uh, started doing more and more rides you mentioned uh, yeah. 50 kilometers yeah. five times a week kind of uh, yeah. schedule right uh, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. and you actually in the process You did your first race. Uh, uh, yes. What was it? It Bengal was an ITT, ba- yeah. right? Yeah. Bengal Bicycle Championships. Bicycle. Uh, by- yes, okay. right. It's happening right now on a uh-huh. Sunday. It's ha- happening right now. So every okay. every second or third Sunday, it happens. Mm. So yeah, I okay. did my first race. It's like a 
Bang uh, Bangalore Amateur Racing. It started the whole pool started here, so I did right. one of my rides and I landed up for doing a one minute three seconds. Yeah, mm. uh, one hour three right. minutes. Yeah, right. One, one, hour, three one hour three minutes, three minutes, minutes for forty kilometers. Forty, yeah, forty yes. kilometers. Not at so all bad for a first race. That is a really good <laughs> indication race, of yeah. your uh, endurance uh, improvement in your <laughs> endurance, right? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So I track my VO2 max. Uh, I track. I, uh, I was training hard a few months back for mm. into a structured training uh, mm. uh, uh, due to the latest work. Pull, I'm not being able to ride regularly. I, I'm, I'm only doing two or three rides a week but yeah mm. given up given a chance i would ride six six days a week yeah. right right so let us talk a little bit about that right your schedule being an actor uh, it, it tends to be a little bit all over the place right it, you know yeah, how yeah. do you yeah. how do you manage that how do you manage your workout so, and then uh, your work what happens as an actor I need to have that emotional stability to emote my emotions if I'm physically exhausted if I have a, if I have to do an emotional scene the uh, I can't cry I have to force myself to cry right so if I'm doing a structured training in the morning I have to be very emotionally stable to do intense scenes throughout the day and not want multiple takes of that same scene and multiple scenes around the day. So I've I've realized that if I'm doing a really pushing myself in the morning, uh, maybe it's not a very physical, uh, ch physically challenging job to do, uh, but emotionally it's very challenging for an actor to pull out an intense scene after a very physical rigorous workout. Mm -hmm. So I started balancing it. Life is all about balancing. Today, if I have a, I know what my scenes are. I try and do easy rides or maybe not ride. Take a chill pill, have coffee, then go for my shoot. That's how I plan my day. But there are days, uh, since there is a lockdown happening in Calcutta, post 10 o'clock, you can't shoot. Uh, right. So... Uh, we we usually start our day at eight nine. Sometimes if it's at ten, I go for my rides because I'll be back back home by eight, get ready and go for my shoot. That's how I plan my day. Right, right. Yeah, that is very important to kind of make sure uh, what you know what you are doing on the bike is not affecting uh, your day uh, or affecting yes. it in a positive way, not in a negative way. Yeah right so exactly. we, uh, like like you when we were talking about addiction we talked about that right anything that you do if it is affecting other uh, things negatively then it it, hmm. it becomes a, then, then uh, kind a problem, of problem. Like so you have when it to, comes to the reason, balance it the reason the reason i'm an actor uh, um, uh, i'm a celebrity the reason i talk about addiction so i could help others cycling happened uh, this uh, like uh, when i post my stories my cycling i think my my greatest achievement uh, would be i get a lot of messages on my page because i think i have managed to introduce 400 new bikes maybe they are 3000 rupees worth but i have seen me my fans followers they got into cycling at least i have managed to put at least 500 new riders uh, around yeah. west bengal that i definitely. think that's my yeah yeah definitely helps you know you, you yeah. when you talk about it when you uh, you know bring awareness uh, and talk about how it helped you will definitely uh, inspire yes. others and that exactly. is the that is also the reason now uh, you know why uh, i do yeah. this podcast and get people like you to exactly, share your exactly. Journeys, right yeah so, excellent so 
what are uh, sa- some of the things that uh, you learned through your cycling journey that uh, that have helped you in your uh, daily life Uh, cycling keeps me uh, as i said like i hate going to the gym and working out cycling right. keeps me chill uh, if i land up doing like if i if i push myself uh, during the day land up buying 3 600 800 calories i know i could eat a little bit of rice during the day mm-hmm. eat more and i could Uh, you know the whole the, the whole positivity after one satisfactory ride it's a it's a dopamine high you're high throughout the day because you've had a good ride right and then that keeps me going through the day maybe uh, but there are times when i'm low uh, i wish calcutta was a side, like uh, where i live it's a very congested area i wish if i'm whenever i'm low i if i could pick my bike it's not possible because of the cleats and it's a difficult proposition uh, to ride during the day in calcutta but i hope right. some day uh, i would be able to do it like my my immediate goal is to ride in europe take a bike mm. back pack my bike go to europe do a bike ride there like go to from this place to that place this is the kind of uh, goal that i've set Uh, this year awesome awesome yeah there is some beautiful riding to be done in europe um, i've i've ridden in denmark i've ridden in uh, italy and london i, I Those, really want to go to southern yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i keep on seeing uh, these cycling stories i follow a lot of riders so um, like yeah. i wish i could ride yeah, yeah. so if you do a Uh, ride from Mannheim, which is sitting in uh, Germany, from Mannheim to Heidelberg. So mm. that's my immediate plan. I would do that. I want to do that. Let's see yeah. uh, if the summer. I think, yeah, as soon as the travel opens up. If, yeah, if opens. yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right. It's been a fantastic chat. Uh, thank you for uh, Steam, yeah. taking the time. but uh, to kind of conclude the session what are some of the tips that you would give working athletes to do well at sport and uh, work so any kind of sport uh, see uh, in 2002 the kind of city life that we have you're all always stressed 24/7 we live a very stressful life the breathing the city air is already polluted in city in the world in india so taking out time for yourself to give yourself that one hour two hour uh really brings out the the you feed your soul um, mm. i i like every bike ride uh it's it's to feed my soul my my innermost happiness it, it can be bike ride it can be anything it can right. be any kind of physical activity what makes you comfortable what what comes from within you don't have to force yourself to do it it's like like when i go to work it doesn't feel like going to work it's a passion for me i like being at work and i right. think i'm more comfortable at work than at my at my home mm-hmm. so it's like i'm more comfortable on, on the saddle than i'm when i'm driving my car right so it's like giving that one hour two hour of your day to just for yourself just for your well being it really matters yes yes it def- definitely does you Thanks need that again. dopamine serot- serotonin flow those adrenaline rushes uh, those competitive small streaks it can be a small strava km but mm. it it gives you it gives you an immense pleasure to when you get that km right so it's yeah. like that you give you reward yourself every day yeah you get a uh, high yes. na- on natural substances natural, within your self yes exactly right? you don't That's need to matters. rely on uh, uh, you know uh, so external foreign body particles Ex- correct 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 yeah. excellent excellent um I, we did not talk about uh, diet 
if should be no yeah. Yeah. i have a problem I, I, I like sharing my problems like i mm. i have a terrible sleep mood if someone tells me uh, you can't have sweets for for a month i'll be dead i'll be really depressed i have a, i have a terrible sweet tooth i indulge in sweets but i moderate my diet uh, mm. like we were saying i have done a lot of different kind of diets i have been into high protein diets high fat diets i have been into ketosis i have uh, pushed myself into ketosis uh, ketogenic diet then i've realized i need to have a balance i can't be focusing on uh, you know i i can't be uh, checking my watch every now and then when it's going to be 2 o'clock i get to eat so i i don't want to be that stretch i've tried i've tried it didn't work for me but what i usually do is i keep my portions low mm. i eat two and a half times a day mm. uh, with a good amount of protein little bit of carbs i i really primarily i don't have a fixed diet mm. okay. um, i wouldn't say i would be lying that i don't have outside food i do a lot of zomato i do a lot of swing bring outside food at home because it keeps me happy good taste you know I, i there are things that i like treating myself these are the kind of things at the same time if i'm if i'm overeating one day i make sure that i burn it off the next day mm. i would do extra 5 kilometers right push myself harder at i'll give you, i'll be putting more watts on the bike to burn that off but i would land a happy so it's about right keeping your soul happy It's about right. finding happiness in small stuff. Yes, yes, that is important as well. Keeping balance, uh, trying yeah. what, Balancing trying to, is. yeah, trying what works for you, what doesn't, and you know, trying to uh, keep you, it. You are the best judge too. to understand what what works for you. Right. right definitely definitely and talking of sweet tooth uh, i have 32 of them all of them sweet <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that is a problem yes so uh, we all need to look at and work on yeah, yes yeah, yeah. awesome awesome it's been a fantastic uh, chat uh, with you and yeah thank you for taking the time and sharing your journey with my working pleasure. my podcast my- my pleasure it has been a great talk and sharing my insights with you and with others it's it's been a great time it's a great sunday for me awesome thank you that was my conversation with anindya i hope you enjoyed that if you are enjoying these podcasts please consider subscribing to the youtube channel as well it really helps thanks again for your continuous support see you next week with another guest